Hey everybody and welcome to How-To Videos with Dr. Amy Gates. This video is part of the Introduction to Statistics Massively Open Online textbook at mathandstatistics.com. It's going to focus on correlation, scatter plots, trend lines, and prediction, all using Excel. The data set that we're going to be working with is made up of two variables. The first variable is a pretest score, and the second variable is the final exam score. So each student will take a pretest and get a score, and then they will take a final exam and get a score as well. And so the question we're asking here is is there a relationship between pretest score and final exam score? If we discover that there, in fact, is a strong relationship or a strong positive relationship between pretest score and final exam score, then in cases where a student may not get the best score on the pretest, we know that they're likely to also get a lower score on the final exam. And so rather than give them the final exam right away, we do more preparation first. So that's one of the applications of this type of correlation study. But the first step here is to actually determine if there is in fact a relationship between the pretest score and the final exam score. The pretest score is considered our independent variable or our X value. The final exam score is considered our dependent variable or our Y value. If you ever have any challenges trying to decide which is dependent and which is independent, always ask yourself, which one are you trying to figure out depends on the other. In this example, we're trying to figure out if final exam depends on pretest score. That's what we're asking, because if it does and somebody gets a low pretest score, we don't want to give them the final yet. So because we're trying to find out if final exam depends on something, it's the dependent variable, because we think it depends on something. And again, the dependent variable is the Y, in most cases. And the independent variable is generally and commonly called the X. For some of you, this may sound very familiar as the typical XY pair. And that's where we're, where we're going with that. So the first thing that we need to do is ask Excel to calculate the correlation coefficient for us, or the R value. The R value can be any number between minus 1 and plus 1. The R value is never greater than 1 and it is never less than minus 1. But it can be any decimal value between minus 1 and plus 1. If the R value is 0, that tells us there's no correlation, no relationship between these variables at all. If the R value is close to plus 1, or closer to plus 1, it's a strong positive correlation. If the R value is closer to minus 1, it's a stronger inverted, opposite, or inverse relationship. Now, what do I mean by that? That means that one of my variables is increasing, but the other one is decreasing at a similar rate, like exercise and body weight. If you increase your exercise, your body weight should eventually decrease to a certain point. Remember, these are not 100% rules. These are just relationships. Uh, similarly, calories and BMI. As, your, as you increase your calories, you expect your body mass in index to increase along with it. Both of those variables are increasing, so that's a positive correlation. So what we're going to see here is uh, an example of a positive correlation. And so we expect an R value that's going to be closer to plus 1. And I only know this, of course, because I've already tested the correlation. In general, you don't know that until you calculate it. So to measure the correlation or the R value, we first choose formulas. And even though Excel has a number of different options here, we want more functions, we want statistical, and we want to scroll down until we find Corel, which stands for correlation coefficient. And we click that, and then Excel says, OK, what are your two data sets here that you want me to look at to see if they're related? Well, the first one is the pretest score. Using my mouse, I'm going to highlight just the data set. That's from A2 all the way down to A21. And when I release it, I can see that Excel did it correctly, or I did it correctly is a more accurate thing to say. I know that A2 is the first value in this particular data set for pretest scores. And I know that A21 is the last value. So this is correct. 
If I want to, I can also type this in by hand. So for final exam, which is my other variable, the data in there starts at B2, colon, goes all the way to B21. So I can either type it in by hand or I can highlight it with the mouse and then I click OK. This value, which I will make bold, is in fact the R value. It is the correlation coefficient for these two variables given the data sets that I have here. This value is very close to plus one. It is a very strong positive correlation or relationship between these two variables. So we expect to see that as somebody's uh, pretest score goes up, their final exam score goes up as well. Let's take some examples. If a person has a pretest score of 53.18, their final exam is 64.6. If they have a pretest score of 71.02, their final exam is 82. If they have a pretest score of 91, their final exam is 98. So as the pretest score values themselves are increasing, the final exam corresponding value is increasing at a very similar rate. That's what the R value tells you. It's a measure of the relationship, the linear relationship, between two data sets. Now, if you want to see that relationship in graphical form, the next thing that you would do is build a scatter plot of the data. Remember we said that pretest was our independent variable, or our x, and the final exam score was our dependent variable, or our y. That means that each of these students created an XY pair. So that first student who got the pretest score and then the final exam score, that's the first XY pair or point on the coordinate system. This is going to be the second point on the coordinate system. This will be the third point. All together we're going to have 20 points on that XY coordinate system. And that's going to be our scatter plot. So let's see what that looks like. If I click insert in Excel and come over to the area and I see the little scatter dots here, that's my scatter plot option area. If I click the arrow, I can see all the different scatter options that I could choose from. Of course, I just want the normal scatter plot option. Now you'll notice that a blank box has formed. And that's because I haven't selected any data. So Excel knows that I'm trying to build a graph, but I haven't told it what I want to build it out of yet, so it's blank. What I'm going to do is go ahead and get rid of all this by clicking somewhere empty. Then I'm going to select all of my data. Not the labels, just the data. Now I'm going to go back to this area and choose the scatter option. You can see that Excel is always one step ahead showing you what it might look like. If you hover over things with your mouse without clicking a choice, you can see all the different options. This is the one I want though, so I'm going to click to choose it. Now I'll make it a little bigger so we get a nice good look at it. The next thing you'll see is once you create a graph, Excel gives you all the fun different options you can do with your graph. And there's a lot. And this is not particularly about graphing, so we're not going to cover them all. But if you hover over them, you can actually see right away that it will make changes to your graph so that you can uh, investigate or preview these different options that are out there. So let's choose the blue one. That one looks good. Now I can change the title of my graph if I want to. And there are many, many other things you can, of course, do with your graph. Don't be afraid to try things in Excel, by the way. If you ever get, get stuck, double click. When you double click, things pop up over to the side and they give you many, many options. So many different things that you can do in Excel. And in the end, if it doesn't do what you want it to do, you can shut it off and start it over again. So don't, don't be afraid to just kind of click around and see what options are out there. This is our scatter plot. This is our scatter plot of pretest score, which is along the x-axis, and final exam score, which is along the y-axis. Because our R value or our correlation coefficient was so strong, we expected that all of our little pairs, our pretest final exam pairs, would be clustered in a linear fashion. That's actually what the R value is a measure of, is how clustered your 
data values are in a linear fashion. This is quite clustered and very linear. Okay, now let's say I want to get a regression line, sometimes called a best fit line or a trend line. Well, I'm going to click outside. It sort of resets everything. Then I'll click inside on any one of these points and then right click. When I right click on any one of the points, Excel gives me the option of adding a trend line. If I click that option, over to the right, and I'm going to drag this over so you can see it very well, and then I'll drag it back, it gives you trend line options. Well, I want a linear trend line because this is a linear relationship. And I also would very much like to have the dis equation displayed on the chart itself and the R squared value as well. So I'm going to check both of those boxes and make sure that the linear button is clicked. There are many other options and you can feel free to explore them at, at your will. So let's get this guy to move back over now so that we can see what Excel has done for us. Here's that regression line or trend line or best fit line that we've asked it to create. And I'm going to move this over so that we can get a better look at it. I'm going to make it larger by highlighting it, clicking home, and increasing the size significantly and making it bold. So now we can really see the equation for that line is listed right here. Remember why is the final exam score. X is the pretest score. Because my data is so clustered and my correlation is so strong, I can actually use this equation to make predictions. So if somebody said to me, well, what would happen if a student got a 50 on the pretest score? What would we expect or estimate their final exam score to be? Well, I can actually calculate that by plugging 50 in for X and solving for Y. I can plug any value in for the pretest score and solve for the corresponding expected or estimated final exam score. Remember, this is just an estimate. It's not 100% accurate, but our correlation is quite strong. So we're going to get a pretty good estimate. The R squared value is simply the R value squared. That's literally what it is. R can take on any value from minus 1 to plus 1, but R squared can take on any value from 0 to 1 because it's the square of the R value. The closer the R squared value is to the number 1, the stronger the relationship. And we know that that's true because we know already that our R value is very, very strong. So what have we seen so far in this example? We've seen that in order to calculate the R value or the correlation, you need two variables and you need data for both variables. Once you have that, you can use Excel and the Corel function to calculate the R value. You can also use this data to generate a scatter plot and you can click on any one of the points in the scatter plot click your right mouse button and create a trend line. While creating the trend line, you can ask for the equation of that line and the R squared value. You can use the equation of that line to make predictions. It's just very important before you get started to make sure to identify which of your variables are independent or X and which is dependent or Y because the equation in terms of X and Y. So thank you so much for joining me. I hope this has helped and enjoy mathandstatistics.com.